Hello and welcome everyone. What you are taking a look at today is actually a, a rival, clearly. It's not an optic. The reason why I'm doing this is because my video on the Ruger American Ranch and 556 that I shot Woodland Brutality with, uh, that video is doing extremely well. So I figured, why not let me pull something else out of my safe and go over it real quick. What this is before you is a CZ457 Varmint Precision Trainer. You can clearly tell it's a trainer because of the Manor stock. And that's without a doubt the best highlight of this particular rifle. Now, as you might be able to tell, this is not 100% factory because of the stainless steel barrel. There's a story behind it though. In fact, there's a story behind everything because I can't leave well enough alone. Plus when you spend upwards of a thousand plus dollars on a precision rimfire like this, you expect it to hit a certain sort of criteria. When I first bought this, it didn't really do that. In fact, I spent quite a bit of time trying to chase my own tail, figuring out what was wrong with this rifle. What I mean by that is it wasn't really grouping all that well. Very long story short, the barrel, this one was originally a 20 inch barrel. This is clearly a 16 and a half that's on here now, but the original 20 inch heavy barrel was just very inconsistent across every different type of ammunition you could possibly imagine. Ultimately though, what I came to realize was the barrel had an issue. The issue was it just wasn't really that great, which is very unusual because I've had several CZs, whether it be a 452, 455, or as you see it here, 457, and they've usually been at least consistent. They might not be the best shooter, but they'll at least be able to produce a good group consistently. Now, granted, there are some variables that you have to consider, especially with rimfire at any distance, including 50 yards, because at my range, the wind does crazy things, which we'll talk about soon, but it just wasn't consistent. It would shoot a five round dime, and then it would shoot a five round quarter, then it would shoot a five round penny, then it would shoot a five round, you know, half, half dollar. It was just all over the place. What I ended up coming to the realization was there was something up with the barrel. And what it was, it just wasn't great. I pulled out the two grub screws, which is hold the barrel in place under, of course, the stock. And the barrel literally slid out without even trying. It was actually loose inside there. It was probably about a thou and a half to two thou loose inside the receiver. This is the solution that I had come up with. This is a Lothar Walther barrel. Again, obviously 22 LR, 16 and a half inch threaded. Now they only come threaded. Not that I really particularly care or need it to be threaded, but it's a nice little option to have. Anyway, this barrel, when I went to go install it, was so tight that I actually had to heat up the receiver with a hair dryer before the barrel would slide in. The barrel was actually about five tenths larger diameter than the inside of the receiver, which meant for a very, very snug fit. Once I locked up the grub screws, all was right with the world. Now, I'm not here to tell you about the inaccuracies of a factory barrel on a CC457. No, no, no. I'm here to just go, give you a very brief overview of what this rifle is, some of the things that I've grown to hate about it, some of the things I've grown to really like about it, and some key features that you might not be aware of. With all that being said, let's start with the Manor stock. As you can see, the stock is beautiful, and yes, that is real carbon fiber. This thing is extremely lightweight, sub 30 ounces, and when I pull the action out, it literally feels like there's nothing there. As beautiful as it is though, there are a couple of things about it, let me swing this thing around, that I've grown to not like about it. The first by far is this angle right here. It looks like it would be pretty comfortable, like your cheek would just rest right there, but for whatever reason, this is just not comfortable for me. I have had bags on the back to try to soften it up, and that does help, but ultimately it just, it's, it's never at the right position no matter what. I have put foam inserts to get it just right, but I just don't like it, especially compared to most modern chassis rifles, which we're going to talk about very soon. But this is one thing you have to keep in mind, it's just, it's not for everybody. Really, if you can get behind this thing and shoot it before you, you get the chance to buy one, uh, I'd recommend it because it's not for everybody. Another thing to really mention is despite how beautiful the stock looks, it is extremely, extremely slick. So if your hands get sweaty, like mine do every once in a while, and you're shooting this gun, you're going to just be sliding all over the place. Like there's no traction here. They have some sort of texturing going on on both sides, but it's just not enough. It feels fantastic in hand. I have fairly large hands, and as you can see, you can get on there extremely comfortably. And there's plenty of different ways you could hold this. You got this beautiful little thumb ramp right here, which is, I'm sorry, left-handed shooters, definitely specific, definitely specific for right-handers. 
and you can get very comfortable, but I find it very easy for my hand just to slide around. Even if I put moderate pressure on there, it just it just wants to roll off. Like there's nothing stopping me from doing that. And the last thing I want to do is ruin this by putting grip tape on it. I think it would just take away from the overall appeal of it. The same can be said for the front. I don't really shoot this offhand or unsupported all that much. It's a little bit more set up for PRS, which is what I'm trying to do with it. But again, like there's just, it's really, really slick. And that's something that I think that you would like to know. There's also only one swivel swat, yeah swivel stud on the bottom but the QD cups are really really nice but as you can see again set up for a right hander they're only on the left hand side of the firearm however they at least work really really well put that back there you can see it only rocks a little bit if you want to reposition it you got to de depress the detent and it'll lock in whatever position you want they do not allow for a full rotation and the same thing for the front so you can set up your sling and you could shoot this thing or carry it very comfortably. And when you don't want to have it there, like how I don't want to have it right now in my safe, very quickly and easily pull this off. I'll actually throw that in the back because why the hell not? So that's the stock. There, It's really, really cool. I love how it looks. I like how it feels for the most part. But the problem is with this, again, there's almost no adjustability to it. You have to add things to it which might take away from a certain aesthetic that you might be looking for to have it fit you properly. And that's one of the one of the biggest letdowns, I would say, as far as the stock goes. As far as the rest of the rifle, it is fantastic. If you've never shot a 457 before, or if you've shot a 452 or a 455, and you've never shot one of these, you're in for a real treat with a couple of different things. The first is going to be the bolt. 60 to three, 60 degree throw as opposed to a 90 very short very smooth this thing is very slick the trigger on a 455 or a 452 had a lot of creep in it this absolutely none it's a little hard to see or have it really relay through video but the trigger is fantastic i have this set to about two pounds you can adjust this down to about two and a half pounds what i ended up doing was taking the bottom coil of the spring cutting it off cleaning it up putting it in and it was perfect. You can buy different weight springs for this. You could buy two stage triggers for this if you want, but the single stage from the factory is fantastic. Another thing to note from the bottom, from the factory, these trigger guards are two pieces. So there is a little bit of movement there when you pull this apart. It can be a little bit tricky putting it back, but it's really not that big of an issue. This little block back here is for changing from 22 LR to 17 HMR or 22 Winchester Magnum. There are a larger magazine, so you remove the block to run the larger rounds. A little magazine release on the front is standard for basically all 450 X's and they work extremely, extremely well. Now, another nice thing about the 457 is the bolt knob is clearly threaded. The factory bolt knob is a small little steel ball, and it's not bad, but if you wanna run it really, really hard, get something like this. This is not expensive. I bought this from a place called McMaster Car. You can buy, it. anyone can buy direct from them. These are just machine knobs that are clearly brass threaded on the inside. I think these are M8 1.25, M6 1.2. I think they're like M8 1.25. You can find the information online, match it up to these knobs, and you can get these for very inexpensive in different sizes. I have a couple smaller, a couple larger, or a little bit too large, but this is just absolutely perfect. I have this on my other 457, which I will dedicate another video to because that's probably one of the coolest rifles you'll ever see. Anyway, another really nice feature about the 457. Again, another nice thing is the regular push to unlock safety. The other one had a reverse Mauser, which was not intuitive, not easy to operate. It was just clunky mess. And I will show you that with my 452 video if this video does halfway decent. Anyway, action is fantastic. To pull out the bolt, another difference from a 452 or 455, you have a D, you have a lever on the side that you depress, bolt comes right out. Easy to clean, easy to wipe up and lube. You slide it back in, you're done. Absolutely, absolutely fantastic. Trying to show off that crisp ass trigger a little bit more. Supremely nice. And 
it's a hard stop. You can adjust the over travel in the trigger itself as well. So wildly, wildly excellent trigger. One thing that absolutely sucks about CZs is they still are set in their ways from God knows when about running an 11 millimeter dovetail on the top of this. What does that mean? It means that you might not be able to get away with a 3 8 dovetail ring for this. So what you end up doing is buying a product like this. This is a DIP Products Zero Cant Picatinny Rail. It slides on, you have a couple of set screws on top that, set, that secures it onto the gun and you could run any standard rings. These are my ARC 34 millimeter low rings. They are fantastic. Why is there no optic on the gun? Well, a couple of reasons. I, I would have taken it off even if I still had it, but I'm letting my friend borrow it because he's let me borrow an optic for review. So I removed my Razer HD 4.5 to 27 that usually sits inside this gun and gave it to him. And that's why the rings are bare. But regardless, I'd probably remove it when doing this because it's just so heavy and clunky and large that it would just make filming this a real sort of disaster. But with that, just realize, you know, you're probably going to have to spend a thousand plus dollars on a rifle like this and then have to get a rail like this, or you can get the UTG Pro rings with 11 millimeter dovetail, but good luck finding those in stock. I did a review on those rings many years ago, and those are residing on my Royal, which again, depending on how well this video does, I'll review that next. Anyway, now finally on to the barrel. This barrel is fantastic. I didn't really have many reviews on the Lothar Walther, Lothar, Jesus Christ, Lothar Walther barrels, but people said that they did pretty good. And I can say that this thing shoots fairly well. I'm not gonna say it's an absolute tack driver because my friend Noah has a 24 inch chassis 457, completely factory gun. And it's got a 24 inch barrel, which is, you know, this is a 16, so it's, eight inches longer and it's absurdly heavy it's much more of a uh, a bench gun it's definitely not any sort of practical firearm except for putting it on a bench and shooting extremely stupidly tight groups with it the ammunition that he finds that gun likes a lot is anything sk and that's what i find that this gun particularly likes basically anything sk the only sort of groups i could really show you on this gun i actually just recently did and I was doing torque testing on the action in this stock. This is a pillared stock. There are two aluminum pillars that go from the top, the bottom of the action to the top of the trigger guard that when you torque everything down, it rests on those aluminum pillars. So they're nice and snug. However, it is still just a factory inlet and there is a slight gap throughout the action. I prefer bedding my actions, especially when I'm hunting for accuracy, but I didn't want to bed this and then possibly want to sell this stock. And then maybe the person I sell it to doesn't want it to be bedded. So I figured, let me leave it completely bone stock and do the best that I can with this gun as it's currently configured. So what do we have? We have clearly the manor stock. I did test this with my friend's chassis. So we can actually do a side-by-side -side comparison to see how well they do how well is action, barreled action did versus a manor stock versus a chassis. And uh, what do we have? We have 10 pound, 12 and a half inch pounds, 15 inch pounds. So th this number corresponds to the torque setting on the action screws. And this is ammunition. So this is SK pistol match special, and this is rifle match. So you can clearly see these are all five round groups at 50 yards. And you could see it's capable of doing really, really impressive stuff. That might've been me, but I mean, Basically, all the way up to 20 inch pounds, this thing is fantastic. Falls apart a little bit above 22 and a half, and then just, you can see it progressively gets worse the tighter you make it, which is a little counterintuitive, but guess what, folks? That's just the way it is. You don't know how this is gonna react until you go out there and test it. With the rifle match at 10 inch pounds, that is a five round group that is extremely small at 50 yards. And, you know, it's mostly consistent, but it does that, then that, then that, then that, then that. Whether it be just a coincidence of how tight I made this, or also a factor of wind. So real quick to go over how my range layout is. If you haven't seen footage of it, check out any of my videos. I film down there religiously. But we have two concrete walls on either side. They're about eight foot tall. We have our target line, we have the berm, and then above that we have a very steep hill. And what happens is, picture this is 
All right, let me let me make this live for you. So this is you know our range. We're shooting here. Targets back there. This is one of the walls. So we'll look at the wall from the lengthwise. Wind will usually come from the side. And what happens is it comes up and over, creates a low pressure zone, and then it just spirals. And it spirals. And it does weird ass stuff. So this, a lot of this could be down to wind. Even if it's only a five mile an hour wind, it's enough to throw a shot. I kid you not. A lot of the guys that shoot F class down there at a small bore range, they'll have three or four wind flags set up at different yardage. And very rarely do you see all the flags lined up in the same direction, proving that the wind is moving in one direction. They're usually opposing each other. So as the bullet's tra traveling down, you have a, a full value left wind, a fully value right wind, and then the bullet's just doing this. And it's, it's hard to judge. Anyway, this is what this gun is capable of with this stock. Very good groups. I should really pull the other target out. Very good groups. A lot of that has to do with the ammunition being quality ammunition and a good barrel and halfway decent shooter. I had this running with a bipod and a rear bag, so nothing fancy whatsoever. That's what with the manners. With my friend's chassis stock, you can see we have a little bit of a different style of dispersion at the same sort of value settings. So 10, 12 and a half, 15, 17, and 20 were all fairly close to one another. Whereas over here, 10, 12 and a half were not that great. And then 15 did that bug hole of five rounds. Again, doing the exact same ammunition test for test. Up here was just me burning ammunition through the rifle to lead the barrel properly. Because every ammunition that you're going to put through, or at least every sort of precision 22 LR ammunition that you're going to put through has its own proprietary wax or oil on it. And I like to run at least 15 to 20 rounds fast through it so this way the barrel gets conditioned to that particular ammunition consistency is the key to accuracy anyway you could see it's capable of doing extremely good groups at very particular torque settings it's just a matter of what works with your gun so the gun shoots very well the barrel shoots like i showed you pretty good and that's about it I really like this gun. I was actually contemplating selling it not too long ago, and I quickly realized that would have been a regrettable decision because it's a really nice gun. But, keyword there, but, I am not in love with the stock. I really like the stock, but I don't love it. And honestly, that's one of the main reasons why I chose this gun to film next because I might be selling this Manners stock. By the time this video comes out, this might already be sold. I don't really know, um, but I am going to go the chassis route because as you saw, some of the groups weren't as good, but they're so much more comfortable for me to shoot. They're so much more adjustable and as nice as this looks, I don't really care as much about looks as I care about just adjustability to have to fit me perfect. So this manner stock will be coming off very soon. In fact, tomorrow I might have a chassis coming, depending on if uh, the Postal Service decides it actually wants to do its job or not. And um, I might actually do a follow-up when that comes in and maybe actually get get give you guys some range time with this. Actually see how well this thing works. And with that, that's my basic overview of my 457 Varmint Precision Trainer. They're really cool guns. If you've never ha held the manners... They're not perfect, but they're really, really nice. I don't think you could really buy. I don't think you could buy this stock from Manners. I think it was only sold or only able to be bought through CZ on a rifle. I really wish CZ, for whatever reason, would just come to the 21st century and just sell you, maybe even just like a bare action. They don't even do that. You can't buy a bare action, a barreled action. You have to buy a complete gun and then build it up the way you want it. If you can't get exactly what you want, so. You know, take that for what it's worth. CZ, if you're listening, just sell us a barreled action or a plain action. You could sell these things for 250 300 bucks all day long, and people would buy them all day long. I'd buy one just to have it. But that's basically it. There are other options. Listen, before, before I talk way too long again, like I always do, there are new MTR versions of this. And what that comes with is an MTR barrel, which is a matched chambered barrel. The factory... Varmint Precisions do not come with a match chamber, only the, anything with an MTR. So the original MTR has this really nice lavish wood stock, which is kind of similar to this. But again, I don't like how that feels. The stippling on it literally just feels like it's not even there. 
but they come with matched chambers, which are a little bit tighter. They might give you a little more consistency or accuracy out of the gun. So that's something to check out. You can buy this as an MTR and it will have, speaking about adjustability, an adjustable comb height. So you can get that, but you're talking about 12 to 1300 plus dollars for one of those. And is it worth it? Well, I mean, if you're looking for the cool factor with having a manner stock, it is really cool. Uh, I've only seen ever one other mannered 450X at my local range over the last like six years. And I think that was a 455, which was pretty common. Anyway, there you go. That is my basic overview of my 457 Varmint Precision Trainer. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully I didn't rant on too long. And uh, hopefully see you again next time. Take care. And a huge thank you to my Patreon providers and my Subscribestar subscribers. Without you, this truly wouldn't be possible. If you'd like to support my channel but don't want to join either of those, I completely understand. But you could still help by using my affiliate links in the description below, and or like, share, and subscribe as always. Again, thank you very much.